Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here, and today's video, quite frankly, is gonna make me feel very old. I'm turning 30 in two weeks, and it's hard to believe that I have been customizing shoes for over 10 years now. It's wild to look back on just how much has changed over that time period. I've gotten married, had two beautiful babies, started a YouTube channel, and as Papa De Jesus so graciously points out, might be starting to grow a few gray hairs within my beard, even though he's 60 plus and still hardly has any gray. So thanks for that one, Dad. And my back, yeah, it's just not the same anymore after sitting on these chairs all day. It's been a crazy ride, but the one thing that has always remained a constant is a genuine love for customizing shoes. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you 10 lessons that I've learned in 10 years working as a sneaker customizer. So first off, people pay more when they understand the process. For the first five or six years of business, I primarily only posted photo content to Instagram and specifically the completed product photos of all of the different shoes and I never posted anything about myself. My goal was to simply always just let the artwork do the talking. But what happened over time is that nobody was actually connecting or relating to me in any which way since the whole page was basically just product photos on a screen. Nobody's really able to follow along on my journey if I'm not putting myself out there, nor are they seeing the process on how all of these things are made if I'm only showing the end result or the destination and none of the journey. This led us to want to create a YouTube page to not only document the journey, but show just how much goes into this craft. Because now when you're able to show people what something looks like in the beginning stages as a blank canvas, along with where you're actually able to take it as an artist, then they're able to appreciate everything in between so much more. It's like watching a great movie or following along on the classic hero's journey. Once you actually see that character arc come full circle, then you're able to appreciate the story that much more. You know, there's an age old saying that great products sell themselves, but as an artist, you're not just selling any other product. What you're actually selling along with your artwork is a little piece of yourself. You're really selling a story and people buy stories. Number two, embrace the ups and downs. As an entrepreneur, we quite often think that our path to success is gonna follow an upwards linear trajectory when that's not usually the case for most people. You're bound to face roadblocks and challenges at some point, but these can be a great opportunity for you to learn and grow from. As artists, there's a really good chance that you're gonna go through dry spells at some point, or just feel like you're no longer growing. And this is a great time to look inwards and ask, what do I need to be doing differently in order to get to that next level, rather than repeating the same things that I've been doing over and over again that haven't been working. And the success that you're bound to achieve if you just stick with it is gonna be so much sweeter when it's been hard fought and you've earned it. But it's so important that you're truly able to fall in love with the process of becoming great and you're willing to embrace all of the ups and downs. Because not only in business, but also in life, you only get hurt on a roller coaster if you jump off. Number three, when it comes to surviving as an artist, just commissions aren't enough. I remember thinking to myself, if I could go from selling 100 to 300 or 500 or 700 pairs in a year, along with becoming more efficient and raising my prices here and there, that would be the best way for me to truly scale my business. But what was so hard for me to grasp is that there's only so much you can do with your two hands at any given time. Since I was a self-employed artist though, commissions were the only real way that I was making money, so I thought this was where I needed to dedicate 100% of my time and efforts. But this led to me having the really bad mindset of thinking that if I don't have a paintbrush in my hands, if I'm not working on open orders at this moment, then I'm not making money. But as an independent artist, you have to try to find ways to generate income streams within your business outside of just commissions. And this can come from a multitude of places. Maybe you're able to create a product that solves a problem within your niche, or what I think the goal of any artist should be is to try and monetize your content. Because when you're creating high quality content that will in turn grow your following, this can lead you to things like brand deals, it opens the door for you to post affiliate links if you're someone who shows your process, and this also gives you the chance at getting ad revenue. Thankfully nowadays, more platforms are paying creators for their content like YouTube and TikTok. So when you're posting to these, you're gonna be accomplishing two goals. You're gonna be advertising your work, but you're also potentially going to be getting paid for the views and quite literally getting paid while you sleep. So generating other streams of income outside of just commissions is vital because what you're really selling along with commissions is you're selling your time and you only have so much of that to go around. Number four, 
Don't be a jerk. Your customer service and how you treat people along with the experience you deliver can go a long way. Nowadays on social media, you have absolutely no idea who might be reaching out to you and what opportunities they may present you in the future. You might just happen to meet the right client at the right time that could absolutely change the entire outlook of your business. This could be somebody who potentially reorders from you constantly in the future, or they just might so happen to know the right person at the right business and be telling somebody about your work that then all of a sudden this massive opportunity can come your way. You never know who your clients might know, so you always want to deliver the best experience possible when working with you. It's very important to not only care about your clients, but show them that you care. Number five, there's freedom in failure. To take real leaps and bounds as an artist, you're gonna need to take calculated risk at some point. And if you plan to stay ahead of the curve, you're gonna need that freedom to fail when it comes to experimenting and exploring in uncharted territory. Maybe you wanna test out something like dropping an entire collection of original designs, or you just have a new idea for how you plan to market or sell your product. You have to be willing to just throw a bunch of darts at the wall to increase your chances that one of them will stick. For example, did you know that Thomas Edison had over 1,000 unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb? Now you do. At some point, you have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone because that's where the magic really happens. If you want something that you've never had before, you have to be willing to do something that you've never done. Number six, sharpen your sword. This one's so important for all artists, but really carve out time for yourself to practice and learn and grow. Try to spot your weaknesses and work on those to become a more well-rounded artist. You should constantly find new techniques and tools that you can experiment with and hopefully add something else to your arsenal. One of the best decisions that I ever made was dedicating an entire month to practicing painting portraits every single day. And while I still have plenty of room to grow, of course, I now no longer have to turn anybody down who wants to get a portrait done, nor do I have to feel afraid that maybe I can't handle it. It's very easy to get stuck in the hamster wheel of just taking on order after order and doing the same exact things that got you here, but force yourself to dedicate time to growing as an artist. Because when you're enhancing your skills, you're also going to be increasing your value and what you can charge. Number seven, surround yourself with people who get it. Finding genuine people within your niche can be beneficial in so many different ways. These are gonna be the people that want to see you win and succeed and motivate you to be better and vice versa. They say that a rising tide raises all ships, so artists helping artists can only be a good thing. I think it's also important to have a general pulse on the community so that you can see the wins and losses from others and actually learn from them along the way. Number eight, the artwork is just the beginning. Your content plus your photography is and should be an extension of the story that you're trying to convey through your artwork. And once that artwork is actually complete, now it's up to you to decide how you wanna present it to the world. And ultimately, how you decide to portray your piece can totally alter the feeling that someone gets when viewing your work. So this is something I believe is worth putting serious consideration into. And if your goal is to have a high price shoe, then it only makes sense that you have high quality content to match. It's easy as artists to think the hard part's done once we've completed the artwork, but the story's just beginning. And if you're gonna have a premium product that you wanna sell for premium pricing, then you're gonna need premium photography. Number nine, slow and steady wins the race. I once had the goal of having the shortest wait time of any customizer around, and I definitely wanted to be faster than Nike ID. But what you don't want to happen is setting up unrealistic expectations when it comes to wait times. I think you're much better off under promising and over delivering rather than the other way around when it comes to a handmade product like this. You essentially wanna leave a window open for yourself or a buffer zone because no matter what, things happen, stuff comes up, and quite frankly, as artists, sometimes you just might not be feeling a project and you might wanna move some things around, scoot something up down the line, and you just can't do that if you're constantly working on super tight deadlines. So give yourself that freedom to take your time and not race through everything, because we all know the story of the tortoise and the hare, and that tortoise just so happens to win every time. Number 10, just create. So what does this slogan that you hear us sign off of every video with actually mean? Well, for me at the end of the day, no matter the challenges that life or business may present you, creating and making art is what's always been there for me and it's what I've always loved, whether things are going good 
or things are going bad. And whether you're just starting out or struggling to get by or trying to reach new heights as an artist, just creating is that one constant that brings us all together and likely what brings you to this video right now. So often as artists, it's easy to tell yourself why you can't do something. I can't do something because I'm not as good as that person. I can't do something because I don't have the right equipment or tools. I can't do something for any other reason. But what's so much more important than any of that is just pushing everything else to the side and fueling your burning passion to create no matter the circumstances. Because nothing great has been and nothing great can be accomplished without passion. The passion to just create. Whew, okay, there we go. So those are the 10 most important lessons that I've learned over the last 10 years working as a customizer. Hopefully you guys were able to take away a little something from today's video, maybe get a fresh new perspective on things and hopefully find something that you can employ on your journey. But whether you've been working as an artist for a week or as long as I have, I'd love to hear about some of the lessons that you've learned along the way. Be sure to let me know about some of those in the comments down below. Also, if you guys are interested in chatting with other like-minded customizers, make sure you come and join us over at the official Toothpick Gang Discord. We'll have that link down in the description. And if you want to stay up to date on any news regarding the DCF experience and course dates for 2022, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. But otherwise, guys, I'm Dylan DeJesus, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. It feels so good to finally get this one out there, as this is an idea that I've had in mind for a really long time, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. But get ready for next week, as we'll be reviewing all of the submissions for the DCF Heritage Contest finally. All right guys, everybody get out there and just create.